Welcome, everybody, to Webinar 777, the global leader for life-changing webinars to empower dreams and transform communities. And today, you're going to be meeting Ken MacArthur, who is someone who's empowered my dreams. In fact, if I hadn't met Ken, I might not be connected to you right now. And the title of our message today is Making a Difference. Ken's going to be talking about the Impact Manifesto how we all make a difference whether we want to or not. And he's going to be sharing how he went from being a nobody to somebody very significant. And he'll be talking about some simple things that you can do where you can increase your impact. We also have Joel Com as a guest panelist, and Ken will introduce him in a little bit. Let me just first introduce Ken, and then I'll let him introduce Joel. Ken is one of the kindest and most generous people you will ever meet. He's been selected as one of the 20 most influential people on the internet. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty significant. So you're meeting someone who's not only a friend of mine, but he's a hero of mine, someone who's made a big difference in my life. He's the author of the best selling book, Impact How to Get Noticed, Motivate Millions and make a difference in a noisy world, and maybe even make millions for yourself at the same time. In addition, Ken and his colleagues are in the process of making several movies, and one of those is the Impact Factor movie. So th this is going to be fun for you. And he's a pioneer. Ken is a pioneer in marketing joint ventures. In fact, I call him the king of joint ventures in the Internet marketing world. And joint ventures are the number one way for you to grow your list and grow your influence. And so here, what I'm telling you is you're learning from one of the best one of the people best. you could ever learn from to magnify your impact. Just think, he wrote the book, Impact. So, you know, you can bet he knows a lot about it and he's passionate about the subject. And also, I want to share one other thing before Ken says hi. And that's that it's because I went to one of his impact events and I met David Hancock there, who's a frequent, uh, frequent uh, guest and, and speaker at, at Ken's events. It's because of that, that, that my book, I Was Busy Now I'm Not, was published by Morgan James Publishing. And NASDAQ says that David Hancock is the future of publishing, one of the, most, one of the world's most prestigious business leaders. Getting to know Ken, you know, and getting to interact with him is very significant. And Joel is going to be the keynote speaker at this upcoming Impact event in Denver, Colorado. So, Ken, welcome to the call here today. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Obviously, I am grateful to even know you, let alone have you as a guest today. Wow. Uh, thanks so much. <laughs> That's quite an introduction. I um, I love your enthusiasm. I love your trajectory. You're just going up, up, up. I'm really excited about all the things that are going on with you and that you're having an impact. Of course, uh, like you said, we we all have an impact whether we want to or not. And uh, and I'm so happy that you're making such a positive impact in the world because uh, everything that you do makes a difference. And it's those small things that really make the biggest difference. So. Fantastic to be here with you and your uh, your audience. Uh, that's really really special for me. It's also special for me to have the amazing Joel Com with me. Joel is one of my dearest friends. He's been on the internet since the dark ages, almost as long as I have. <laughs> uh, I beat him to the internet, but he probably beat me to the web uh, with one of the first uh, websites that was ever put up in the world. And he is uh, just. You know, gone on an adventure that uh, that most people uh, would just be astounded at. Everything from uh, becoming an icon on Yahoo Games uh, as one of the creators of the of, of Yahoo Games uh, to having uh, applications on the internet. New York Times best-selling author. I was so happy to be able to be with him. And the other person that you mentioned who was David Hancock uh, when Joel Com sent his uh, book to the New York Times, and we got to celebrate that in New York City. Uh, just to tell you the kind of guy uh, Joel is, he let me camp out on his uh, on his couch that night in the hotel so I wouldn't have to take a, a couple-hour trip uh, and turn around uh, to go back out to Philadelphia and come back. He's a heart and soul guy. 
he's there when you're up and he's there when you're down and um, you know I think that's one of the things that speaks for him uh, just in a in a mighty mighty way but he's also you know one of the top social media people on the internet uh, just an incredible person to know I hope that uh, people can come out to the impact event in Denver uh, that's um, that's on April the 29th through May the 1st and meet Joel because uh, there's nothing like being in, in, in together in person you know Joseph was talking about the impact that coming to an impact event had on him and uh, <laughs> I've been talking for years about how powerful uh, creating joint ventures and having an impact uh, can be and the best way that you can have that impact is to get together in person because you know you can look a person in the eye and you can see the value that they bring you can see the heart and soul of people like Joel and you can see Joseph and all of the amazing things that he's doing and know his heart too and so when we get together uh, we can do so much more than we ever could learn alone so welcome to Joel for me Thanks, Ken. Very kind of you. I love you. I appreciate the kind introduction. Well, Joel, how did you get connected to Ken in the first place? Uh, you know, I, I'm i trying to re remember the initial story. I know that he was putting on an event, a JV Alert Live event in Philadelphia, and I want to say it was 2006. Have I got that right, Ken? It was somewhere in there. Yeah, probably five or six. I'm pretty uh, sure that Ken reached out to me about uh, coming and speaking at his event, and um, he had a, a great track record and came highly recommended. And so I said, uh, absolutely. And at that time, I was uh, I had just come off uh, my my book uh, AdSense uh, Secrets being a big success, and I think I went out to teach his audience about how to make money with Google AdSense, and uh, got a chance to sit down with them and. Uh, enjoy a meal and, and have a conversation and at that point I gave him a name that for better or worse has stuck with him to this day. Sh shall I say it Ken? Go ahead and say what it <laughs> The nicest guy in internet marketing. <laughs> I'm not sure that's such a good thing Joseph uh, to be uh, branded by Joel Com as the nicest guy in internet marketing. Uh, nice guys always finish last, right? I think it is a good thing to be branded that way. And I remember seeing yeah. that, actually. I remember seeing that several years ago that someone, and now I can see it was Joel, had had yeah. branded you as the nicest guy in Internet marketing because some people, you know, don't have that reputation. And so nice guys don't always finish last. In fact, ultimately, <laughs> nice guys finish first. You know, maybe not at first they don't finish, they're not at the at the front. But, you know, so I'm just going to correct that. I think that's a great branding. That's certainly the way that I think of you, too. And it's something that attracts me to you. And it attracts a lot of other people, too. So embrace that. <laughs> well, and here, here's the secret, which uh, you may or may not know. Don't tell anyone, but I'm actually a nice guy, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, the 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 the, uh, the interesting part of that is that you know we talk about branding and stuff and what do you want to be remembered for? Um, and I'd really like to be remembered for being significant in some way. In other words, uh, I think we all want to have real value, you know, to have significance of our life. If we're going to live a life, uh, then I'd love to have that life be impactful, and I'd like to have it make a difference somewhere. And if we can achieve achieve some kind of significance in this lifetime, then it makes our life uh, worthwhile. The time that we spend here, and uh, you know, um, <clears throat> my life has uh, grown well beyond the internet. <laughs> so, so I also want to keep uh, keep the eye on the bullet when people have an impact to be made. Uh, it's not just online. You know, there's so many ways that we can move the masses. We're doing that with exciting things like the movie projects. Uh, radio, television, uh, book publishing, all of those things that allow us to reach uh, thousands if not millions of, of people. You know, we all impact thousands of people just by existing in our lifetimes, but if we leverage art, science, and technology, we can always impact so many more. Well, that's a great message because, yeah, every, everyone's different, and some people are, you know, they might be a mom. 
you know, grandma, or they, you know, they might not even have official work and other people might have a traditional job. And then you have entrepreneurs. Some people might be in ministry and some people might be retired, but they're still active in some way. And so we can still have an impact and you're going to be opening people's eyes to the impact that they're having that they're not even aware of. Well, Ken, can you share a little bit of your background on how you transitioned from being a nobody, or you were never a nobody, but not many people knew <laughs> about you, to being somebody very significant where you have much greater impact. How did that transition happen? Well, you did talk about joint ventures, and I, I started my first website a long, long time ago. Um, I've always asked the question, where are your customers uh, now, and who are they listening to? I think it's an important question question to ask because uh, as human beings we all clump together into groups and within those groups we usually find key influencers that are uh, leading the conversation that are motivating people people like uh, Joel they're out there having those conversations early making those uh, conversations strong and important and uh, what I did was I hooked up with a guy uh, that I thought had the audience that I wanted to reach I was uh, Nobody with no list, no joint venture partners, um, <laughs> like, a, like a young man that I, I mentored at one uh, point uh, said, just a laptop and a dream, but I didn't even have a laptop. And, uh, and um, we were able to put together a tremendous joint venture uh, that helped the pe people that he wanted to serve. And I think that's how we, uh, that's how we ach achieve uh, impact is we make something better, uh, like uh, Joel has in the background of his picture. You see, do good stuff. <clears throat> if we can make something better, uh, then we can have uh, an impact in a positive way. And we can start with one or two people. In this case, uh, there were 160,000 people. And we took uh, that first website by making something simple better and uh, ran it into the top 3,000 sites on the internet. That showed me the power of joint ventures because that was the first person that I had ever reached out to have a joint venture with. And from that, uh, we took, um, and I said, you know, there's got to be other uh, people who have joint ventures. Uh, there could uh, be another Jim Daniels, who was the first uh, person that I created a joint venture with. And um, I created a, a group called JB Alert. Um, we took that site to 362 out of all of the sites on the internet, and that was the start of something amazing. And and then we got together in person, and that makes it even more impactful because 30 people came together in a small room, and out of that, literally millions and millions and millions of dollars have been made. Thousands and thousands of lives have been changed, and uh, we're we're here together today because of. You know, three guys sat on a couch and just asked simple questions like, what do you want to do? How can I help you? And how can we make something happen? And, and that's the way all of the, the biggest impacts in the world happen. At one of our events uh, where we built a campaign to um, actually create an impact by helping uh, teenagers at risk of suicide, uh, a friend of mine, Frank Sousa, asked uh, two simple questions. And the first one was, Who's the person that had the biggest impact on you? And what did they do to have that impact? And when they asked that question, um, it was people from all kinds of walks of life that had had that impact. It could be a great friend, a teacher, uh, a bum off the street that they never saw again. But the common thread in that impact was just a, a kind word of encouragement at the time when they needed it. And uh, if we can all do that, we can all have a word of encouragement uh, to somebody today. So that's how you have an impact. Uh, that's how you, I got started anyway. And the rest is just uh, an amazing uh, experience of surrounding myself with amazing people like Joel and like you, Joseph. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. What you just shared is the person having an impact on you could be anyone, and you might meet them one time. And you can impact someone by just meeting them one time. I remember meeting a plastic surgeon in 1999 that completely redirected my life as a physician in a 15-minute conversation. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, Joel, I've, ne I've never had the opportunity to ask you, but out of the people in your life, 
who has had a big, big impact on you and what did they do to have that impact? Oh boy, I got to go right to Zig Ziglar. Um, yeah. Back in, I want to say 1989, I had been, I was uh, working in sales. <clears throat> I had been um, a radio DJ and um, had a, um, was newly married, I think, at the time and went to one of his conferences um, called Born to Win. And boy, it impacted me on so many levels. Reading his See You at the Top book and Secrets of Closing the Sale helped me with my mindset and my, uh, my sales techniques, which helped me to uh, succeed as a salesman. And, uh, you know, I remember at that conference, I, I actually had a vision, not like, I, not like something that I saw with my eyes, but in my mind's eye, I had this vision of uh, one day speaking before large audiences. And I had no desire to do that. In fact, in college, I was a speech comm major, and uh, speak public speaking terrified me. I know you can't, that there's a <laughs> disconnect there in trying to understand that now, but had incredible anxiety over public speaking and had no desire to, but I had this vision of speaking before large, large audiences, and I just filed that away. Um, and then years later, uh, at 2005, was the first year that I got asked to start speaking again and audiences grew from there and, and I think they're going to continue I think I, I don't even think that the vision that I had has yet been met even though I've spoken before some large groups I think I saw it even bigger so uh, Zig uh, had a huge impact and what's really cool about it is in 2010 um, he, uh, he, he was on stage at Kerry Wilkerson's event in Dallas and I got to share the stage with him. I was also speaking at that same event. So it kind of came full circle again. Um, got to spend some time with him. Of course, he passed away uh, a, sh a couple years later. And uh, But I got to tell him what he meant to me. And uh, we spent some time chatting. And, and I felt like um, everything had come full circle. I was just going to say, you know, we all have those experiences where we go full circle on things. And I remember being at Brendan Burchard's event. Uh, life's golden ticket and uh, there was a man who actually started me on the path to music uh, his name was Glenn Yarbrough I uh, actually uh, had been impacted as a young man when I was 14 years old by a, uh, a folk singer who's, who uh, uh, the group of peers that I was with was uh, interested in and they introduced me to this guy it actually made me pick up and play a guitar, which was one of the ways that I discovered that you can have an impact. Because if you sit around and and uh, play sad songs to pretty girls, uh, you can make them cry. So, <laughs> so in that experience, I learned about impact. But uh, at Brendan Burchard's event, I was speaking. I took a group of people there uh, around the teen suicide thing, and we opened up uh, for. Uh, Brendan Burchard's event and then uh, raised awareness to about 1.9 million people in just a, a weekend for teen suicide. Uh, but at the end of that, a young lady came up to me and said, Ken, you've changed my life. And I got to talking to her and I said, uh, what's your name? And she said, it's Stephanie Yarbrough. And uh, it was funny because it just made me think of Glenn Yarbrough. And I found out uh, that it was her, that she was his daughter. And so if you think about that, that's kind of the circle of life. You know, Glenn Yarbrough certainly changed my life uh, by bringing me into music. And, uh, and then it's coming uh, full circle a generation later. So you just never know what those small things are that are going to have the impact. Well, thank you. And we want to have good impact. So we see Joel behind him. It says, do good stuff. So obviously that's important to you. <laughs> tell, tell us about that, Joel. Yeah, well, uh, you know, probably back in, I want to say, 2009 or 10, I got tired of signing off on my emails with, to your success and warm regards and, you know, the typical things that people put out there. And... I started signing do good stuff because it's my personal belief that if you just seek to bring value to the world through your God-given passions, your talents, your skills, your abilities, your personality, um, that you know, we become, we sow seeds basically, we're, you know, we plant out there and we don't have to be 
focused on what's in it for us and how will that seed, you know, uh, sprout will it will it die will it sprout will it bring forth fruit we don't have to worry about that if we're just putting it out there we trust the process that if we're doing good stuff will come back to us you know some people call it karma others believe it's you know the law of sowing and reaping which is basically same general concept that uh, you put it out there and you trust and so I like I sign my emails do good stuff I actually have a lifestyle brand uh, that we put it on t-shirts this is a sticker for do good stuff and they're popping up on people's laptops all over the place and we've sold hundreds of t-shirts and we're actually going to be a uh, doing a Kickstarter campaign in June around the do good stuff lifestyle brand with the hopes of uh, bringing awareness to the message because it's really a philanthropic others focused message encouraging people to go and make a difference and uh, at the same time want to uh, I give a portion of everything that I earn from Do Good Stuff to uh, my favorite uh, charity, which is WaterIsLife.com, run by my friend Ken Soret out of uh, Oklahoma City, and they're one of the uh, clean water initiative programs that are on the ground in places like Kenya, saving lives on a daily basis by digging clean water wells and providing uh, temporary solutions like water filtration straws that are saving lives. Well, that's really neat. Uh, I didn't realize that you're putting that in your email signature. I saw it in the sign behind you. And, you know, I just said it would be neat to do a webinar, a broadcast on Do Good Stuff, you know, with just that title, just to get the message out there. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yes. And then also about, you know, to do a broadcast about that, uh, that ministry uh, that's, uh, you know, bringing, you know, saving lives through water. You know, obviously all well, of us. I'd love to connect you with uh, Ken Surratt. He's a dear friend of mine. And uh, if you've ever seen the First World Problems video that went viral, uh, it's the one with the Haitians standing in their the run-down, you know, shacks saying things like, I hate when I order a burger with no pick." They still give me pickles, or I hate it when my cable goes out, or I hate when I have to get up across the room to get the remote control, and it's called First World Problems, uh, and it had something like 20 million views between Facebook and YouTube, uh, and it's all about showing that, look, we've got it really good. Even the poorest, you know, in America and Western world are wealthy compared to what people deal with in some of these third world nations. And uh, just a little bit goes a long way to actually saving a life. Well, that's neat. Well, send me an email about that and, you know, I'll make the Absolutely. connection and or we'll do a webinar. I usually include the person that makes the introduction with the broadcast, too. And, you know, it's really cool. By the way, what you're, for all of you in the audience, you're watching just the power of flow, right? I mean, we have questions and Ken's going to get through those. And, and we want to <laughs> answer uh, your questions as well, too. But this is just the power of flow, right? We're having an inspired conversation. It's about doing good stuff or it's about impact. And new ideas are being birthed that are going to, you know, save lives, change lives, et cetera. And you can do what I'm doing. You can do what Joel's doing, what Ken's doing. You know, it's, we, you don't have to have a degree. You know, you don't have to have a college degree. You don't even have to have a high school degree. You just have to have what Ken said he started with, a dream and almost a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I, I think that uh, anybody that can, uh, can bring you a cup of coffee can uh, create a joint venture, you know, and make something better. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing. I used to say that at my JV Alert live events. Uh, and I got lots of coffee that way, so it's kind of funny. Uh, but uh, you know, if you're an event producer and you're you're really really busy, you know, do you notice people that come up to you and without you even asking, bring you a cup of coffee and are thinking about you first? You know, that's one of the key things in creating joint ventures is the power to actually listen, to actually try and understand what other people are looking for. Sometimes when people come to events where millions and millions of dollars are made and, and huge joint ventures are going down and they think that the most important thing is the project and the making money and all of those the things. But if we look down below the surface, you know, most of the people who were the top list producers uh, in the world weren't really thinking that they needed more money. Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, 
they were looking for other things that drove them as passion, you know. And, uh, you know, whether or not you like uh, to help um, abandoned animals or you like to help kids that are at risk of suicide or, or you just have other interests that are, that are every day. I mean, I, uh, Joel, I'm sure, has some very, very strange interests <laughs> in his life. So it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter what things uh, you connect on if you really connect and you really listen. Listening is such an undervalued skill, and we so often just talk, and when we're talking, we're not learning. So I'll shut up and let uh, you guys talk. I don't think my interests are strange. <laughs> eclectic uh, is the word, Joel, eclectic. Perhaps, perhaps. I guess uh, we all have our unique tastes, right? Yes, we do. And that's the exciting part of life, you know. Um, the good thing is that we don't have to be always following, that sometimes we get to leave and we get to show other people all of the exciting things that are out there working and, and uh, that have real impact and if we show people who have uh, resources and know how to leverage the system uh, to people that that um, that really have a passion and that really want to make a difference in the world we can enable that to happen faster because you know I may have had lots of impact in the past I'm sure whatever I did for better or worse will carry uh, into the future because it always does. We can't stop that impact even if we want to. Uh, I could have been a better father, um, but uh, I, you know, I can only uh, have the impact that I have today. I don't know if I've got a future ahead of me. I just know that today is the day that I can have an impact and that uh, makes you guys and, and everybody that's listening here the most important people in my life right now because that's the people that we can have an impact. Maybe somebody will hear something that Joseph or Joel says and go out and act on that and that will have an impact in the world. Um, and if we can focus in on what we can do and what's the most important thing to do right now? What can we do right now that will have the biggest impact, that will have the most leveraged impact that we can have. Can we impact the people who are going to impact other people? And can we build somebody's dream to the point where they have a real impact in the world? Well, Ken, I like how you're talking about uh, just being in the now, because none of us have the promise of tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow never comes. It's always today. And, and so many people, they're worried about next week, next month, this bill that's coming down the pipe, and, and they're not even in the moment. Or they might be with someone and they're on their cell phone communicating with someone else. They're like three different places. You know, they're not even in the moment with where they are. And, and so I really like how you're talking about the now, the moment, because none of us have the promise of tomorrow, whether we're 20 or 40 or 60 or 80. Uh, this is all, all that we have is today. And so if we can just uh, be thankful to, for where we are, what we're doing and who we're with, whether we want to be there, whether we want to be with that person, whether we want to be doing that, if we can have an attitude of gratitude of thanksgiving in that moment, then we create an environment of love, joy and peace. And it's in that environment that good th that good stuff happens, you know, with that, with you know, when we're thankful, you know, that's when good stuff happens. So I like that about the now. Well, let's hear from you, Joel, about what he shared. Well, I, I'm very much at the place in my life where I want to embrace the moments. I, I call it carpeing all the little diems, you know, just gather them together and, and try. You know, I have not perfected by any stretch um, being fully present. That's, you know, my mind is always going and I'm thinking about the things I need to do. But I, uh, I don't work nearly as hard as it appears I do for those who know me. Um, the things that I'm putting out there, it makes it look like I'm really hustling, and and I'm not. I think I've learned the secret, and that is this. If you're going to write something down that I'm going to share, it's this. It's work smart, not hard. I, I, when I look back at the successes in my life, I find that most of those successes came from the very small efforts. It was uh, rather than rolling up a, a snow up the mountain to build this big snowball, it was finding the mountains where there was already a snowball on them and giving them a little shove. 
to start yeah. rolling them the direction they wanted to go. It's all about leverage. It's about relationships. Um, and it's about surrounding yourself with like-minded people that want to go the same direction and knowing what you're good at and what you're not. And so I try not to do the things that I'm not good at. Even if they need to be done, it makes more sense for me to either source it and pay somebody to do it or to find a partner that will work with me for equity that will uh, you know, come alongside and get those things taken care of. So I can focus on what I do best. I have a very limited range of what I do best, but if I stick in that wheelhouse and find others to do the other necessary tasks in order to accomplish it, I find that that's working smart for me, not hard. Gives me lots of leisure time and makes my work feel like play, which it really is. You know, I've, I've heard it said that if you can't tell the difference between your work and your play, you're doing one of them wrong. And so for me, uh, you know, trying to be in the moment, uh, enjoying what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, making the best of it, be, being with the people I'm with when I'm with them, uh, it, I don't always succeed at it, especially if I don't like the people I'm with, but I usually do. And, uh, and I try and make a practice of it. Hopefully as I get older, I'll get, uh, I'll get better. But it's one of the reasons I go to so many events, whether I'm speaking or not, is because I put myself in situations where I can um, have variety in my life and connect with people and learn something new and have new experiences. And for my personality type, that's essential. The same old, same old bores me, and I would rather build a new business with risk where there's no guarantee of uh, it being incredibly profitable than work the same thing all the time and watch the cash roll in. I'm just, I've made money, I've lost money, I know how to make money, um, and I know how to lose it, uh, but it's not the focus of my life because what you said is so true, Joe. We, uh, we don't know when our time is up, you know, and... Uh, I just watched uh, recently, not not a gentleman that I knew well, but that many of my friends in the internet marketing space knew well, uh, Sean Wander, who you know passed away at what was he 39 years old, Ken? I think he's 42, but but uh, you know young kids and, and in perfect health and and stuff like that. You would you would think that life is going to go on uh, just like it has for years and years and years, uh, but you know what? History shows. That life never goes on the same way that it uh, that it has for years and years and years. It never did uh, in all the time that you were doing that. You know, it just uh, changes every day. The one thing that we have that's a constant is change, and how we react to that and how we leverage that change is uh, how we have the the biggest impact. You know, how we can make things really really happen. Absolutely. Well, thank you. I'm having so much fun here. You know, I think we could just stay for like three hours. I hope you guys don't have anything <laughs> at the back end. You know, this. <laughs> this is good. Joel's a busy guy. Uh, we we got to watch out for him. <laughs> well, uh, as a time doctor, I'm branded as a time doctor, and I wrote the book, I Was Busy, Now I'm Not, Changing the Way You Think About Time. I want to ask each of you, how do you manage your time? You actually don't manage time, but how do you manage yourselves to steward <laughs> your time? Ken, let's start with you. How, how does someone with so much, how do two people with so much influence manage your time or steward your time? You know, people tell me that they're amazed at how much stuff I get done. <laughs> and, and other people who know me really well are amazed that I get anything done. So it's uh, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. What I try to do is to do things that, uh, that are important, that are going to have a, a bigger impact. And so every day I get up and I think, what is the one thing that I can do right this second that will make everything else that I do so much more impactful. Can uh, you know maybe at some points in your life it's just getting enough breathing room uh, on the money front that you can actually have the resources to be able to do it. Maybe it's uh, building a team. This year I've spent a huge amount of time just building a team of people that really deliver for me, and that leverages my time so much more effectively. Uh, before, you know, if you tried somebody out and they didn't work out, uh, you know, that seemed like a waste of time, right? It seemed like uh, we were just spinning wheels. Uh, but if you can lock in those uh, rare people that really have the heart to give 
and the ability and the discipline to follow through and actually do something. <laughs> you know, when we're looking for joint venture partners, what we look for is people that actually do what they say they're going to do and that are thinking of you first. And if we, if we can possibly find people like that to put on our team, uh, then that leverages our time so effectively. So uh, every day it's just a cycle of, number one, am I doing the kinds of things that I want to be doing in the first place? Uh, when I start uh, consulting with somebody or working with a mentoring client, I'm asking them two simple questions. What do you want to do when you get up in the morning? And what will make you feel like when you get to the end of your life, like you lived, you loved, and you made a difference? Because I figure if you get up every morning and you're really excited about what you're going to do every day and you can't wait to, to, to be doing it, you get to the end of your life and you've lived and you loved and you made a difference, that's a pretty good life. So every day we should ask ourselves the question first, am I doing what I'm really, really wanting to do today? Because that's the way I can be the most impactful. And then what are the things out of all the possibilities, we have just endless possibilities of things that we could be doing, uh, out of those, what are the things that are going to be most impactful? And then how can I use uh, the resources and the other people that I have in my team to make those impacts so much greater? Can I make my message longer? Can I, can I actually... Uh, motivate people? Can I get in front of those key channels? Uh, can I develop partnerships and relationships that will spread a message like wildfire? And those are the kinds of things we teach at the Impact Event. That's why people like Joel are there to help people. And you'll find those people are some of the most heartfelt, uh, impactful uh, people in the world. You know, if you're an introvert, uh, you know, there are a lot of introverts that are up there on the stage. You don't have to feel like you're going to be devol you know, uh, deluged by people. You're just going to get uh, mountains of attention. What you're going to get is you're going to get people that want to support you, that want to help you, and that have that knowledge and experience to really, really help uh, get your ideas, your products and services out to millions of people instead of just thousands. So that's the kind of impact that we want to have. That's what my passion is every day when I get up. How can I possibly help somebody have an impact uh, in this particular moment, in this particular day? Thank you for that great answer. There's a lot of pearls in there. I'm going to have this transcribed too, and I'll make that transcription available to all of you out there in Cyberland. You know, we're so grateful that you're here. You aren't just a name on a list. You know, you matter uh, to us, and, and we care about you. And I liked what you said, Ken, about just the joint venture partners, you two criteria. You said, number one, do they do what they say they're going to do? And number two, are they, do, are they, do they care about adding value to you? Do they actually care about you rather than what they can get for themselves? Well, Joel, let's hear your answer. You know, we're, we're giving a lesson on time here. Yeah, so I'm uh, just because of my personality type, I'm more a fly by the seat of your pants kind of person. I really enjoy the freedom that I have. Uh, I'm, I'm working on multiple projects at any one time, but I'm not driven by the need to have it all done now. Um, I allow myself the space to flow and things happen when they happen. The only things that I keep to a rigid schedule are my commitments. For example, we're doing this webinar today. I show up. I'm on time, it's on my calendar. If I have calls with people, they're on my calendar. If I have events to speak at, they're on my calendar. My leisure activities that I plan, concerts or dinners, so I'll put those on my calendar. But for the most part, uh, you know, I've always been a night owl. I stay up until I can't keep my eyes open. I sleep in until I wake up. And then I just start going through my day. And I know, you know, my to-do list is all here. I do keep a list, but most of the time I just kind of know instinctively what I need to pursue that day. And so time management for me just means keeping uh, my obligations where I need them. And so as long as I have this device, this is my brain, then I know, you know when I have to be at appointments. And um, in doing the next thing, it's like what, 
where would I like to put my energy right now? Is it going to be in a Snapchat story? Is it going to be preparing this talk that I know is coming up? Is it going to be writing this article? Uh, do I need to go through my email? Do I feel like it's reached the place where there's so much in there that I want to tend to that? This is what works for me. Many people, they need to have the planner, the guide, their day. I'm going to do this from 11 to noon. I'm going to do this from 1 to 2. I'm going to have lunch here. And, and that's what helps them. Uh, everybody's different. You've got to figure out what works best for you. For me, just flowing through my day and doing at that moment, the next thing, uh, it, it, well, it's worked for almost 52 years now, so I'm going to stick with it. I love the idea of scheduling freedom you know when when we have <laughs> when we have uh, things on our calendar uh, you know I like to block out just nothing but uh, you know freedom in there and that's one of the things that uh, makes me the happiest is when I've got time to just be creative to think that undervalued skill if you can if you can just put away a day just to be alone, you know, and not have anybody around you and not have any distractions, uh, that can make you so much more productive. Well, thank you. Those are great uh, answers. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just share uh, one thought here from the Time Doctor, and that's the principle of one thing and the focusing question. So one of the things that I do uh, on most days is ask, what is one thing I can do today that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? Or what is one thing I can do this week that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? Or what is one thing I can do this month or this year? Or what is one thing I can do for my finances this week that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? That's called the focusing question. But I like, Joel, how you shared about uh, leaving margin in your schedule because when we have margin it allows yeah a lot of margin and the freedom, of scheduling freedom and that allows for opportunity to slip in <laughs> unexpectedly and also it allows you to tend to emergencies that you know maybe you wouldn't have been able to tend to so we all have things uh, uh, pop up in the course of our days or our weeks and so we need to have margin and actually you know I you know I think ideally we want a margin of at least 20 25 percent uh, of our day to be free time uh, that's not scheduled so that we can handle other things and not be in a hurry because busyness is a great enemy of relationship I would just say that if unless I'm at a conference and that is part of my margin, uh, probably a good 75 to 80 percent of my day is that margin and the scheduled things, you know. So, for example, if I look at a day like today, I have three things scheduled. This call, an interview I'm doing with Kevin Harrington, and a, uh, a joint venture call a little later on. Everything else is that margin. And for me, I, and, and I want to give people permission, if that feels right to you, but you've been told you need to schedule everything out, and somehow that feels restrictive, then maybe try for a short period of time to give yourself more of that freedom and see if you don't find yourself being more creative and getting more done. Well, I'm growing. <laughs> I've learned something really valuable here. I like that idea. <laughs> Joel doesn't work for a living. That's what we've learned. <laughs> I play. Actually, Joel works smart <laughs> for his living. <laughs> That's what we're learning. <laughs> yeah, Joel, Joel does work smart for his living. Also, Joel is a very, very creative person. And you got to have space to create. If you don't have any space to create, to think about things, and if you don't have the adventure along the way, then you can't do anything different, and uh, and Joel does things uh, differently every single time he moves. So I think that's amazing. It's what it's part of what makes him uh, special and unique, and uh, and and so incredible. Uh, uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, we can't be passionate about you know having uh, the impact that we have and having it in a leveraged way. Because I also know that Joel is a person who really thinks strategically about how do I get this message out, how do I get, uh, you know, not just everything going downhill, but maybe directing that downhill so that it can move as fast as possible in the most impactful way. 
uh, that we want to go because we do want to go with the momentum. Momentum. We want to be where the people are. Uh, we want to stand in the river, and we need sometimes big dams to direct that because uh, sometimes the river's going in the wrong direction. You know, <laughs> sometimes there are things out there. Uh, you know, uh, those small impacts that we have can be positive or negative. You know, just like I said at the beginning you make a difference whether you want to or not. There are people out there that are impacting the world in tremendous negative ways and getting lots of amplification on it. So if we can be part of the stream that moves it, we can be part of the seed that gets spread everywhere and, uh, and then multiplies, which is an even better way to have an impact. If you want to have an impact, it's not so much you know, trying to redirect everything as it is how many seeds can you plant out there that just take over the weed? So um, that's one way to have an impact. Well, thank you. What is your rule of five to achieve success? That actually came from Jack Canfield uh, when uh, they were looking to make a, a bestseller out of uh, the book uh, Check, Chicken Soup for the Soul. And he, of course, got it from somebody else because everything that we get we get from somebody else when he was looking to make his book a bestseller he actually talked to one of his mentors and he used the analogy of the of the biggest tree in the forest if you want to chop down even the biggest tree in the forest if you keep chipping away at it eventually any big tree will fall down and I think that the rule of five that Jack adopted was really the rule of I'm going to do five things every single day to have an impact on this process. In this case, he wanted to make a, be a best-selling book, so they worked and worked and worked just by doing five things. Maybe it was uh, showing up on five webcasts uh, or, or interviews in that ca uh, case, uh, or maybe it was uh, putting together a press release, or maybe it was showing up a live event. Whatever that was, every single day did five things. I think of my friend uh, John Kramer who wrote a book called Thousand and One Ways to Market Your Book. And if any author in the world, no matter what a miserable author they were, actually implemented all 1,001 ways that you can market your book, they would have a bestseller. You know, it's what I call checkbox marketing. It just means that if you make a huge list of all of the things that you could possibly be doing to have an impact and then you maybe if you were smart you'd order those lists in the degree of uh, the time that you can execute them and the impact that you can have by doing those particular things and then you started checking off boxes you will have an impact there is no doubt about it well thank you the next question I was going to ask was how important networking is to your success, but I want to put that in the context because you've you've been answering that question really, you know, in the answers that you've given previously. I want you to tell about the impact event taking place in Denver in late April 2016, last couple of days in April and the first day in May. Um, just tell us. Tell us a little bit more about that, if both of you could. I mean, what's what's the website address for that, for those that are interested in? Uh, you can work? go to the you can go to the impactevent.com, theimpactevent.com, and get all the information on the impact event. It's in Denver. It's uh, April 29th through May the first, and we have a really, really stellar uh, group of uh, thought leaders that will help you get your ideas, products, and services out to millions of people, whether you're an author, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a small business person, a nonprofit visionary, anybody that wants to get a, a message of hope out to millions of people and do good stuff out there in the world, uh, then that's the way that you can really, really learn how to leverage your message. I mean, we have people uh, from all walks of life that are coming to speak to you. We have people that can help you with your speaking abilities. We have people that can help you with uh, YouTube or, or social media kinds of things. We have people that can help you uh, leverage through outsourcing. We have people that are performance experts. We have people that are really, really thought leaders in gratitude and, and helping other people. Just an incredible all-star 
uh, lineup of people. Um, of course, spearheaded by the amazing Joel Com, and you can't get any better than that. Um, and I, I would just love to have people join us because. Uh, working together, we can really have an impact. And if you're going to be there, you'll get a chance to experience some of these people in an amazing, amazing way. Look at all the love people have for you there in that picture. I just love that. I want everybody surrounding you. <laughs> people just love Ken MacArthur. If, if you guys want to come to uh, just a, a heartfelt uh, event with a family feel of people that really care about your success and which tons of great content just stop whatever you're doing go to the site theimpactevent.com and sign up and come here to Denver to meet us uh, you will not regret it you will love it that's my and problem. thank you so much Joel for saying that and I really really appreciate that uh, Joseph I do have something that's special just for the people on this webcast the normal ticket for um, the impact event is a 697 ticket, uh, and uh, we have an early bird special that's going on right now for all three days of impact, uh, which is 297. But just for the people who are listening to this broadcast, uh, if they go to a special um, link that's just for you and, and people that you refer in there, they can get a $97 ticket to the entire event, and it's. Uh, You'll have to write this down or put it in the notes, but it's theimpactevent.com forward slash 97 ticket. It's basically your no excuses ticket. I don't want money to be the reason that you don't come to the impact event because I don't care how rich you are. I want to make you richer by introducing you to amazing people. And I think uh, you know that's, that's the true basis of wealth. And this collection of people are people that I have developed over the course of over a decade of just the most incredible people I know um, that are going to be there. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to meeting them. And I want to meet the people that are on this, uh, on this webcast that are, are um, out there and going to make an impact in the world so that uh, we can see how we can work together and how we can make a difference in a powerful way. Wow, this was a surprise. I didn't know he was going to do that, and so thank, uh, thank you so much. So it's theimpactevent.com slash 97 ticket? Yes, that's exactly right. Okay, well, I'll put that in a follow-up email to, to people and also the link to theimpactevent.com. And so we we didn't uh, disc formally discuss the principle of giving and receiving, but Joel talked about you know seed, you know seed time and harvest, and and it's been modeled to you today. What's happened today has been modeling these different uh, topics, and we're host another uh, another webinar if if Ken's agreeable to it uh, for just specifically the impact factor movie, and maybe we'll get some other people that are involved in that. So we didn't get to that uh, today, but. Uh, that's okay, we got to what was most important. We got to what was most important today and there's been a lot of pearls. So I just wanna thank you, Ken, for agreeing to do this. This has been so fun. Uh, this is my sweet spot, you know, being a maestro, uh, just facilitating, you know, helping other people <laughs> share their messages with the world. <laughs> and I thank love that, Joseph. Yeah, thank you, Joel. And thank you for each of you in the audience for choosing to invest your time, your most valuable resource, to participate in this broadcast. And for all of you, for the hundreds or thousands of you that watch or listen to the replay here in the next uh, week or two or even beyond that, just thank you. And just blessings to you, your family, your dreams, uh, your community. And we look forward to connecting with you on other live global broadcasts. Blessings to all of you and goodbye. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye -bye.